two American League teams. We'll see the Kansas City Royals on the road as they play against the Chicago White Sox. Major League Baseball coming up on 2K Sports. Just moments from now, it'll be Jake Peavy. His fantastic stuff will be out there on the mound. April is in the books. 2K Sports welcomes you, our broadcast of MLB. Cellular Field in Chicago. The White Sox looking for a little home magic. Peavy gets going here against Kansas City. What do you think we're going to see from him? Oh, Jake Peavy on the mound on this one. And you got to take a look. He's got pitches that really move in every direction. That unbelievable two-seam fastball with great movement on it. A cut fastball. He can run into the hands of the left-handers. And an unbelievable slider that's just put away pitch. A great arsenal of pitches and an aggressiveness on the mound. And we'll have a chance now to see how the Royals line up, presented by Pepsi. And it's Juan Pierre now to lead it off. The White Sox won last night, and coming after losing the first of three, we'll see if the momentum carries them to a 2-1 series win against Kansas City. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Swing and a miss on the cutter, 0-1. And the last outing for this ball club, talk about controlling, dominating, they did. Yeah, let's just hope they save one for this next game. Good patience as Juan Pierre lets that one go by for a ball. It's even. You take a look at last year, he was one for three off Peavy. Swung on, line softly toward the left side. And he's on. First batter up. That could be a good sign offensively. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Thoughts, Steve? Anybody stand out? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And David DeJesus to bat. Cutter just misses. 1-0. Well, good movement on the cutter there, but he's got to get the ball down in the zone. He can get hurt with hitters throwing it up there. 1-0 pitch. That's the cutter in there. 1-1. Here's the pitch. 1-1 delivery. A fastball taken for a strike. 1-2. and two. Hitters have to have great balance and be prepared for the pitch away. If you open up even a little bit, you can't catch up to that four-seam fastball on the outside corner. 1-2 pitch coming. And he leaves that one alone. David DeJesus evens the count. And DeJesus is out of there. A big swing, no contact. Oh, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. And Butler's in the box. And a breakout season for first baseman D.H. Billy Butler of the Kansas City Royals. And if the Royals are to compete, they have to find some help from... Oh, Pierre trying to steal. And he is safe, just beating that throw. Oh, he's going to try to steal third. Safe, he gets in there. This is the effective use of the fastball. You can move it around the zone and hit your spot. They go down and in right there. Looks like the hitter was thinking away. Fouled off. Or Billy Butler. The question of the pitchers found a way to get him out of there. He is a guy who does not miss his cuts at the plate. No, he doesn't. He is a free swinger. He's going to let it fly. Only 58 walks and 608 at bats. If he's going to if he's going to get pitched to a lot differently now because of his reputation after this 2009 season, he's going to have to be a little more patient at the plate. Full count pitch from PB. He makes contact. Line drive. And he steps on first. That's the second up. And they get that run in. And here's Rick on Keel. And with the lead, this lineup looks as though they're ready to do some more damage. Uh, still a ways to go, but pitching's going to catch up here. Well, they staked out an early lead in this one. Head up the middle. And it's through. Base hit on Keel. And if you're spending time with mom, show her you really care. Some quality time. Tune in Mother's Day. It'll be Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. Start time is 8 o'clock Eastern.
Looking forward to that one, Gary. That's going to be some kind of ball game to tune into. And swing and a miss on Peavy's pitch. 0-1. Plays off the cutter. Good pitch, but it's 1 and 1. Good action on that cut fastball. Down in the zone. Hitter just laid off. A line drive towards short. And Ramirez feels the ball. Well, the pitcher did everything he could right here. He got the ground ball like he wanted. But you see this runner, man. Once he left the box, he is flying, and he beats this one out. And that's the ball. PB too far outside with it. At the belt, the 1 0. Fastball swung on. Couldn't connect 1 1. Got to really credit the way this offense is working the count here in the first inning. They understand the game decided by middle relievers today. They may get this starter out early. And the sides retired as they head into the dugout. Early pressure being put on. A run over in the first. The Royals. And we've got Brian Bannister out on the mound for Kansas City. He'll be starting. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Well, you watch Brian Bannister out on the mound, you're going to recognize nothing's overpowering with his stuff. He really needs to command and move the ball around and work his sequence of pitches. Now the first pitch. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0-1. He hit for a 300 average last year against Brian Bannister. Through the infield base hit, that's their first hit. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. Scouting pick John, who are we uh, looking at today? Well, you talk about a veteran presence in the middle of the lineup. Paul Canerco has been one of the more consistent power hitters in baseball over the last eight to ten years. He's a guy that just does it in a calm, quiet way. He doesn't put up the huge monster numbers, but he puts up the consistent numbers every year. But he also loves to get that big hit. Let's see if he can deliver one here in this one. Here's the 0-1 pitch by up the middle. And it gets down. The streak is on. Got a chance to check out the Royals defense. Here's what it looks like. Infield, outfield factors in this one, Steve. Jason Kendall's always been known for his ability to call the game. His relationship with the pitching staff has been critical to his success and his team's success. And here's Paul Canerco. He's the league leader in ribbies. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. He waves at that breaker and misses. And an 0-1 count. Or he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary. Really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. What a runner on his way to third. And here are the standings in the Central Division as we move into May. Brought to you by State Farm. First place, the White Sox. In the second spot, the Twins. In third place, it's the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Another year in the middle of the pack for the Kansas City Royals. That pretty much is as anticipated coming into the season. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Leading the MLB in batting average. For some reason, he tried to hit that pitch in the dirt. It's a strike. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes, Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Well, they want a do-over from last night. He had five hits last night, and they wanted to do it over again today. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one as a cake. But just a great sequence of pitches right there, and it only took him three. Boy, that's about as fine a job on the mound as you can get. Two down. Runners at first and second. The pitch from Bannister. Hit sharply down the line. And there's Gordon for the third out. So, no. Alex Gordon leading it off. Third base. four. Alex. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Cut fastball in there for a call strike.
on the way. Good patience. Alex Gordon letting that one go by. It evens the count. This is in the air. Straight away left. That's one away. Let's take a look where the Kansas City Royals rank right now in the American League. Sixth in stolen bases, eighth in strikeouts, and an offense that's in the top ten in triples. That ability to drive the ball into the gaps is a real asset for a club, but also that speed and aggressiveness to turn them into triples. And we've got Anderson batting. Ball one. Just missed with the fastball. One and zero. Oh. And Peavy with a 1-0 delivery. And that swung on and hit. Rios. Beckham able to pull that one in. And Kendall's in the box. Two outs and nobody on. Call strike. And Peavy's got him on one. And you can hit your spot with that kind of movement. Down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. Good hard slider, swung on and missed. 0 and 2. Ball. And he lays off that one outside. 1 and 2. Ground ball headed for the middle. Back up. Throws on to first, side is retired. No runs, no hits, no one left on. And it'll be the White Sox. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Cruck bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And Alex Rios to lead off. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. The pitch from Bannister. Pitcher gets a little help right there. A dirt pitch for a swinging strike. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. A smash to first. And he'll step on first for out number one. Catcher, number 12. It's going to be Przinski. Well, A.J. Krasinski put together a pretty solid season for the White Sox in 2009, hitting 300. He doesn't strike out a lot. He's a contest. Hard ground to short. Avilas, two away. The teams who have been reaching home the most number over the past 25. 10, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. Second, the A's. The Orioles, third. Fourth, the Angels. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. And Mark T in to bat. One of the best batting averages in the league. And a good defensive half inning. Three up, three down. White Sox still looking for a run. And there's the familiar face of the manager, Trey Hillman. And uh, probably very happy to have that one-run lead at this moment. And one Pierre to bat. Two hits, 13 at bats last year off the White Sox. And that one is in there, his second hit today. At the plate. And that's going to bring David DeJesus up. Well, anytime you can get a guy on base who can steal bases, it puts so much pressure on the opponent. Let's see if they can get him around to score a run. Called strike, and PB's got him on one. A cut fastball just ran inside on the hitter's hands. He had no chance to even get out and swing at it. Tough pitch. And he leaves that one alone. David DeJesus evens the count. Now the 1-1 pitch. Ooh, tough to lay off there, but it's 2-1. Now the 2-1. Lays off that fastball. It's a called strike, 2-2. Two two. You can really stay out of big trouble in the big inning if you can spot your fastball down in the zone. Cutter just about frozen, but it's full now. Good action on that cut fastball down in the zone. Hitter just let. Oh, Pierre trying to steal. On, oh, he saws him off as this one's hit on the ground. Too late, and he is safe at second. The opportunity for offense is right now. This could be demoralizing for the pitcher. You have an at bat that goes that long, and you think you had him a couple times, and he fouled off some tough pitches, and he ends up getting that base hit. He really has to refocus himself and settle down. And he's up with it. The second for one. And two. A double play. 
Nice pickup on that one, then around for two. That's like infield drills in the pregame, except this time they got two outs. Nice work to get the double play. RBI chance for Rick on Keel. And he starts and Keel out. This one's grounded hard up the middle. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Solid outing moves on here, Jake Peavy. He's held the offense to just one run through three innings. He'll go to the bottom of the third. Designated hitter, number 18, Johnny Damon. Swing and a shot to third. And that gets down. Damon, base hit. And that's going to bring Scott Pesednik up. Had a base hit his last time up. Runner on first. The pitch from Bannister. Drilled towards third. And it's caught. The play by Gordon. Well, they call it the hot corner for a reason as this ball is scorched. It almost took his hand off. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. And Alexi Ramirez is a guy who can do a lot of things offensively. Kind of like an Alfonso Soriano guy. A guy who can hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he can also hit for a high average. 0-1 oh, count as that started off with a strike. Alexei Ramirez uh, first seen in the 06 World Baseball Classic. He had an impressive series. A lot of scouts so uh, hoped in the White Sox. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. This one towards Pierre. As he drops back and puts it away. Time to take a look at the on-base percentage leaders brought to you by State Farm. These guys really understand the nature of the game. They understand that they cannot help the pitcher retire them. They force the pitcher to throw it over the plate. They can put it in play and get a base hit, or they'll take a walk. And it's Paul Canerco now. He leads the American League and runs about it in. Over near third. Throws to first in time. That's three down. In, out of the inning. Six pitches in a Diaspo at the plate. Kansas City Royals, second place, number 13, Alberto Velasco. First pitch to him. Smash towards the middle. Beckham. Oh. One away now. Here's the May schedule for the White Sox. Tonight is the last game of the Kansas City series. And then a home series facing the Jays and their all-star Vernon Wells. That series is four games. After that, they meet up with Joe Maurer, a road series facing the Twins, a team they beat in the previous series between the two. Avilas at the plate, lined out in his last at bat. First pitch on the way. Line drive fouled off oh. towards first. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Oh, now that one's way back to the backstop. Not a pretty pitch, no damage. Started to go around, but a called strike, one and two. Slider swung on and missed. Two down. That's a lot of movement there for pitch at 87 miles per hour. Well, you'll see this thing get tracked to the lower corner of the plate. It looked like the batter thought he had this one, but in the end, it was just too much for him to handle. And uh, not the way he was looking to end that at bat, John. And it's Alex Gordon now. Over the course of last season, a very good 294 against the White Sox at U.S. Cellular Field. Here it comes. Good patience. Alex Gordon letting that one go by. It evens the count. Good spot there. Just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase. He wouldn't go for it. Here's the 1-1. 1-1 pitch. Slider taken for a strike. 1-2. and two. 
Well, that's a great pitch when you get it to break low in the zone like that with that kind of movement. Awfully tough on the hitter. Swung and a ground ball to third. Throws to first side is retired. Three up, three down for Jake Beebe. And it'll be the white side. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. He definitely brings a lot of attention to his at bats. First pitch to Quinton. He swings and drives this one. And that's number one. Take a look at what's coming up for the Royals. The Chicago series ends tonight. Then they'll have to contend with Michael Young in the rest of that lineup for Texas. Great series there. That is a four game road series. And after that they take their battle back into the AL Central. The Cleveland Indians. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. And it goes foul. Beckham uh, made his debut in June and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the majors. Which certainly did and you talk to White Sox personnel and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. The pitch from Bannister. There's contact. He drove it well. Anderson will field. He comes up with it easily here. We get a break in the action. Let's take a moment to check out our State Farm leaderboard and team slugging percentage. Number one, the White Sox. Blue Jays in second. The Red Sox third. The Orioles fourth. And we've got the Twins who are number five. But one through nine, this team can absolutely pound the baseball. Number one in baseball and slugging percentage. And it goes. There's a swing and a liner towards first. And he can't run it down. Off the wall on a hop. And he ends up at second. That's a double. A very, very smooth and level swing right there going through that strike zone. And he drives that ball. Now, let's see if this will start a two out rally now that he's on second base. It's going to be Przinski. He's number one in runs scored in the league. And that'll bring Marti into the plate. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. Two men on, two men out. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. And Bannister can't get him to go after that one. It was down low. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense, and somebody they've really come to rely upon. On the outside corner, one and one. Now Gary's been doing a nice job of kind of dancing out there on the mound. He's had some base runners out there, been able to make pitches and let the defense make plays behind him. So he's done a nice job pitching out of trouble. He delivers. And this is bounced foul to the left side. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. And he scores. That is the tying run. And Pierzynski comes across too. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. That's two RBIs on that hit. Here's our WPA graph, courtesy of Pepsi. Now this pitch just cuts right over the heart of the plate. The hitter handled it perfectly. Mm. That's one of those where you've uh, you've given in by making a bad pitch and, and really made it much easier for the hitter. Yeah, he's better than that. Bear down. And it's Johnny Damon at the plate. This offense has taken some pressure off the pitching wow. at this point, Steve. Uh, Gary, we just saw quality at bat right there. He got the job done. When he got his pitch, he knew what to do with it, and he delivered. Brian Bannister runs that count in his favor to 0-2. As Ralph Kiner, our old buddy, used to say, you know, good at bats is one where you get production, and that's what they got right there. Yeah, but he's also the guy who said you can't win the game unless you take the lead. They pick up two, three hits, strand a man. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crook. And we've got Anderson batting. Well, 
Here's the first pitch. That's a strike. Peavy gets it by him. Well, that cut fastball away. It looks like it's coming down the heart of the plate. It runs to the outside corner. It tends to turn into a pop-up. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. Back up. And that'll set down, Anderson. Oh, Gary, he's pitching well right now. And that's seven straight that he's retired. He is really locked in. Base is empty with one away. At the belt, Peavy kicks and up the middle. Oh, mercy. Boy, that did not miss him by much, but he got out of the way. So Kendall is retired. A well-hit ball. The second baseman easily takes care of it, though. Throws it over. This guy makes it look easy. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. And he tries to get one down. And Przinsky picks it up. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. How about that? Only needed four pitches to set down the guys. Tremendous. The White Sox still ahead. Ozzie Guillen taking a look at you right there. Last inning, that pitching gave up nothing. That's what he wants to see. Now looking for the offense to try and expand the lead. And for Sednik's batting. First pitch. Swung on. That is hit. And he gets it through. That's his second hit in the ballgame. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in run scored, top five. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. He deals. Hit hard to second. And he'll try to make the play. There's one. On to first. Safe. Can't get the back end of that one. They get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. Now Paul Canerco batting with a runner on first. Right there in the top five in home runs. And he starts Canerco out. Swung on. Hit sharply to first. That's one out. Now over to first and safe at first. Close play, not quite enough time to get him. He makes a nice play to get the lead runner at second base with a strong, accurate throw. Good footwork. They just couldn't get the double play. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's the league leader in hits. Line drive. And Butler gloves that one. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your hand. The White Sox, two. Kansas City, one. David DeJesus now to lead it off. Right fielder, number nine, David DeJesus. First count on DeJesus. Here it comes. They set up away. Cutter misses. 1 0. The 1 0 pitch. Low for a ball, 2 0. And that one will head all the way to the backstop for a ball. And here's the delivery. DeJesus, good wood on it. And that gets the tying now run on board. So that brings up Billy Butler. Well, anytime you get your first hitter up in the inning, big things could happen. It opens up a lot of holes in the defense, and it makes it a lot easier to hit for the guys behind you. At the belt, Peavy. Swing, hot shot. And they just try to hold him there at first. Well, sometimes it's about the fundamentals. Sometimes, though, it's about a flare for the dramatic. Well, good, solid, fundamental, flary baseball, huh? And here's Rick on Keel. He's one for three off Peavy. And he starts Ann Keel out. It's hit foul by Ann Keel. Here's the 0-1 from Peavy. And Keel fouls off another. And it holds at 0-2. And, and P 
Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. And Rick on Keel comes up empty. Took the cut, but he didn't catch up to it. Second base with two strikes. The hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. Here's the first pitch. Ground ball towards the second baseman. Beckham throws on to first side is retired. So Jake Peavy holding it down. He's on the hook for a win if he can continue to pitch well. And it'll be the White Sox. Middle of the lineup, due up. And Beckham's in the box. 0 for 2 thus far. Number 15, Jordan Beckham. And the first pitch. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And Anderson gets to it. Well, we have a moment courtesy of State Farm. Let's see who has the league league in hits. One out, and Alex Rios at the plate. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got traded to the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Things just didn't get better in either place. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Or uh, Rios, just a 247 batting average last year. Nobody expected that. No, not at all. And this is a guy who's a former All-Star. You looked at him in Toronto and you thought we can build a team around him in Toronto. It just didn't work out. We got him there. That was a nice strikeout. Now, K Cam's going to show us a good look of this slide. When you're getting guys out with three pitches, you know you're dominating. That's a time when you know you are definitely in the zone, and he was on that at bat going to be Brzezinski and for runs scored he's got more than anyone else in the AL throws to first side is retired nothing doing here in this half inning the White Sox two, Kansas City one and looking on Trey Hillman he knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up here's the first pitch Ball. And that's the ball. PB too far outside with it. Well, I think right now when you're up by a run in the seventh inning, you've shortened the game. You've got the lead. You want to throw strike. Back up the middle. And it's in there. The tying run on board. Well, anytime you can get on base with no outs to start an inning, you know that an extra base hit will probably score you. But even if the batter behind you can figure out a way to get on base, now you have the potential for a huge inning. Here's the pitch. That's it foul by Gordon. Gordon will foul it off again. Now Przinski sets up. Swing and a miss strike three Gordon out. Here's the slider coming right at you in KCAM. Get a better look at that. Well, a fantastic strikeout pitch here. It's headed down and in, and the batter just didn't time this thing right. He never had a chance on this one. Absolutely right, John. And as in real estate, it's all about location. And the first pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. Strike two. Peavy dominating in this A.B. He's got some pitches to play with. No, Gary's still dealing with that one run differential one out here in the seventh inning and again I think it's about making plays right now and offensively force the issue get somebody on base and put the pressure on the pitcher. That's a lot of movement there for pitch at 87 miles per hour. First pitch on the way swung on grounded towards the hole. Our State Farm leaderboard, teams who have great control, not walking people. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Mariners. Third, the Rays. Yankees, fourth. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. It really speaks to the philosophy of the organization when you have the fewest walks given up. They understand they need to throw strikes and let the opposition put the ball in play and trust the defense. Good patience as Juan Pierre lets that one go by for a ball. It's even. 
Uh, two outs here in the seventh inning, Gary, and obviously the game's getting short. You're down by a run. You need a two-out rally. Don't wait. To, you know, every inning is an opportunity. You've had two-out rallies before, so you can get it going here. And the pitch from Peavy too far inside. That'll go for a ball. A pitch like that just locks the hitter up when it's in on the hands. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. That one's grabbed. Side retired. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. The White Sox still ahead. And here's Martian leading it up. He doubled home a couple in his last at bat. Now driven in multiple runs in this one, Gary, and, and obviously a major part of why they're ahead. The pitch from Bannister swings on that first pitch misses the fastball 0 and 1. Well that fastball right there he just blew it by him. That's it pretty well down the line and left. One bounce onto the wall. Well these kind of hits right here a double with no outs to start an inning really puts the pitcher at a disadvantage and puts a lot of added pressure on that pitcher. Now a single can bring home a run. First pitch on the way to Damon. Damon will foul that one away. Swing and ooh look out line drive that shatters the bat. That's one down. Now up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. And Posednik's batting. Two for three thus far. The pitch from Bannister. Hit up the middle. And it gets down a three for four game. Good hitting job. And he's in there. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? So, Alexei Ramirez is batting. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. Well, they were given an opening. And they took it. And now they have a lead late in the game. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. It rolls all the way to the wall. He throws. He's around third and he's heading home. He's in there. Wow, tremendous hustle all the way from first. Well, that's ten hits right now in this ball game for him. And you know, you're going to have to wonder how much longer the manager's going to stick with this guy. Batting now, Paul Canerco. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. Oh, they're taking advantage. There's a swing and a line drive. Courtesy of State Farm, the leaderboard for batting average with runners in scoring position. Uh, clutch hitters are hard to find. It means they have to maintain their focus and control their emotions to let the game come to them. And these guys clearly get that done. Here's Carlos Quinton. The White Sox get another chance here. First pitch to Quinton. A swing, line drive, deep left field. Now it's two away. With that, they keep the runners at first and third. Well, they followed the advanced the scouting reports to a T. They played the outfielders back that time, and he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. The pressure still on the mound. The scoring opportunities continue. And there's De Jesus out number three. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. White Sox up three. Number two hole set to get things started. A look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand that lead.
First pitch to him. Oh. Nope, that one not in there. PV missing. Obviously getting late right now, Gary, and I think that from the pitching perspective, you'll trade an out for a run at this stage of the game, understanding that for every out you get, you're closer to winning. One one pitch. Line towards second. There's the throw. In time for the up. First pitch. Number 16. And Butler's in the box. Lined out last time up. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. And this is a low and away pitch for ball one. Well, trailing right now, down three runs. You got one out here in the eighth. You got five outs left is the way you have to look at it. They need base runners. Get people on and hope somebody runs into one. A three-run deficit, not too much to overcome. The 1-1 pitch. Oh, no, that one in the dirt. Good play by the catcher. Kept it in front of him. The 2-1 pitch. Now swinging a shot toward second. Yeah. And Butler retired. Designated hitter, number 24. And here's Rick on Keel. We'll try it again here. Just one for three thus far. And he starts and Keel out. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. That's caught. Side is retired. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. The White Sox still ahead. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. Struck out swinging his last time up. Number 51, Alex Rios. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Boy, I tell you what, you throw a cutter with that velocity, that's a great pitch. You understand why the hitter swung late. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. A smash to first. And that's out number one, stepping on the back. Catcher, number 12. It's going to be Pruszynski. Rounded out his last time through. Nobody on base, one away. The pitch from Bannister. And this is hit in the air, foul down the left field line. Had a look at that one, but can't come up with it. And that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Avilas. So Pruszynski retired. And Martin to bat. Had a double his last time up. Well, big production in this ball game. Already driving in a couple runs. And a major factor in this offense. Base is empty and two down. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. And Tian swings and misses strike three. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here in this half inning. White Sox four. Kansas City one. Trey Hillman you're looking at. He's reflecting right now. Not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. And here's the first one. Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. I think right now they're looking to get a couple guys on and see if they can't get somebody to hit one out of the ballpark right here. So base runner's the key. Do not run into outs. Be conservative on the bases. You're down three. Pitch on the way. Lines this one to the left side out of play. And that's another foul ball.
2 2 pitch on the ground to second. Beckham. And Kayaspo retired. Two outs remaining in this game. You're up by three runs. I think right now you just want to make plays. Don't walk anybody and catch the ball. Get out. Straight outs for runs. The first pitch. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And it drops the base hit. For the Kansas City well, three hits and a loss there last game, but I tell you what, he continues to swing the bat like this. They're not going to have many losses in the column. And now, Alex Gordon. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. Chicago is ready to try and close this one out. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point, but it is getting late. Do you want to take any chances? The manager decides to go to the pen. First pitch on the way to Gordon. Ground ball up the middle. Over to second for one. On to first. Safe. Can't get the back end of that one. Well, one more out to close this one out, Gary. And obviously a successful day up by three and, and uh, a safe situation. So, you know, obviously looking to try to close this one out and uh, get ready for tomorrow. And we've got Anderson batting. And looking at his numbers from last year, he was 0 for 1 off the White Sox. The 1 0 now. It's now one ball, one strike. He watched that fastball that was in there. Sharp bike to that slider, one and two. The pitch. Low for a ball to Anderson. Swing and a foul straight back. The 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed, and this game's history. Well, they win a great one here today, Gary, and it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching, really leading them to victory. Well, time to bestow that Pepsi Clutch Performance Award. A terrific mound game, the work of Jake Peavy. You know, a lot of times pitchers get really too hard on themselves, and they're their toughest critic. But I don't think he can find too much to complain about after this effort. Yes, he did give up just the one earned run, but his bats came through for him on the offensive end, and he took care of the rest. And Steve, that ought to send these folks home happy. Well, no question about it. They get the win in a close game, a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, and ready for the next one. And until next time, this is Gary Thorne, along with John Crockett and Steve Phillips. We'll catch you at the yard.